do you improve your research skills? That's the topic I'm addressing today with the right question. I'm Daphne Gray-Grant, the Publication Coach. I have a question from Hilary Lynch, an academic writer based in Birmingham, England. Here's what she asked by email. How do I stop taking so many notes when I'm researching? I know I need to summarize more, but I'm afraid of missing out key quotes that will back up the ideas I'm developing. Any suggestions? I use a combination of Evernote and Zotero and either Word or Google Drive. At least one of these was made based on recommendations I think you have made. Do you have any other suggestions for software that would be helpful? Thanks for your questions, Hillary. I'm not certain you're going to like my answer, but I have to tell you, I don't think software is going to help. You already have all the right stuff. My son likes to describe this as a picnic problem. Picnic stands for problem in chair, not in computer. When he says that word to me, of course he's teasing me about my ineptitude with technology. Now, I don't mean to tease you. I just want you to take a slightly different perspective to your work. You say that you're afraid of missing certain key quotes that will back up the ideas you're developing. But ask yourself, which is worse, missing a single quote or being unable to work on your paper because you're so filled with fear or anxiety? I think you're suffering from analysis paralysis, also known as the inability to make a decision. Many academics suffer from this syndrome, so let me give you a few suggestions. I think there are two parts to your problem, Hillary. The first is probably that the stakes are very high. I'm guessing you want to write something that's valuable and groundbreaking and will help secure your future as an academic. Second, you're probably overthinking. You want to see into the future. You want to know in advance what quotes are going to be most useful to make the point you want in your paper. But the problem with both of these mindsets is that they set you up for failure. Rather than imagine you're going to write the best paper in academic history, scale back your expectations so that you're satisfied with a pass. A pass rather than a fail. That's all you have to do. Then, in terms of overthinking, understand that it will only make writing harder for you. Overthinking lowers your performance, kills your creativity, reduces your willpower, and makes you less happy. In the show notes below, I include a link to a blog post I've written on overthinking. Don't do that to yourself. Instead, Give yourself a deadline or accept the one your supervisor has imposed on you and resolve you're going to do the best job you can within that time frame. This may mean foregoing the perfect quote and satisfying yourself with one that's simply good enough. But a slightly more relaxed attitude will help you finish your paper more easily and with a whole lot less stress. One additional tool that might help you is a research diary, and I include a link to that topic below. Hillary, remember that no decision is ever perfect, and there is never only one right answer. Finally, let me wrap up with a quote from the Cherokee author, speaker, and consultant, Anne Wilson Schaefe. Perfectionism is self-abuse of the highest order. Hillary, the academic world is exceptionally demanding. It puts untold pressure on many writers. The people who survive or even thrive are the ones who can put aside those feelings of perfectionism so they can accomplish a significant body of work. If you'd like to learn more about how to make writing a happier, more rewarding process, check out my latest book, Your Happy First Draft. It's not available in bookstores or on Amazon. The only place you can get it is my website, link below and in the show notes.